This small island is infamously known by the Cuban Missile Crisis during the Cold War. Cuba is located in the Caribbean. The island of La Juventud and several archipelagos are also part of Cuba, with Havana as the country's capital. However, how did such a country end up with Castro as their president and what was the effect of this revolution on the people? It is argued that the Cuban Revolution started with Batista. Moreover, Fidel Castro and Raul Castro are the people that instigated the revolution. Before Batista's final presidency, he had control of Cuba's former presidents. Then in the 1940 elections, he officially became president of Cuba. However, in 1952, he led a military coup cancelled the elections, and gained control of Cuba's government once again. Batista's corruption did not end there, he suspended many political rights and made deals with wealthy landowners who owned huge sugar plantains, the American mafia and multinational American corporations. All of this weakened the already fragile economy, making drugs and other vices a real threat in Cuba. Also a strict censorship of the media was in effect under Batista. Batista's corruption led a young lawyer, Fidel Castro, to an armed revolution with his brother Raul after his attempts in Cuban courts failed to stop Batista. The first attack was the ambush on the Moncada barracks. On July 26, 1953, in Santiago, Bayamo, nine revolutionaries were killed in the attack and 56 were killed after Batista's men captured them out of 103 revolutionaries claims Castro, Fidel Castro, his brother Raul, and Fidel Castro's second-in-command, Abel Santa Maria were captured either that day, or later, Abel Santa Maria was killed and tortured, while Fidel and Raul Castro were sent to trial, Fidel Castro was given 15 years, and Raul was sentenced to 13 years, at the Presidio Modelo prison, on Isla de Pinos, later, Batista released the Castro brothers and exiled them to Mexico. In Mexico the Castro brothers met other exiles like Alberto, Bayo, and Ernesto Che Guevara, where they trained to for another attempt to overthrow Batista. The new group renamed themselves the 26th of July movement as a reference to the Castro brothers' attack on the Moncada barracks. The Castro brothers also had the support of other exiles. They also had a group of 80 additional revolutionaries in Mexico to assist in the second attempt to overthrow Batista. The Castro brothers planned to take the 80 fighters on yacht called Grandma. They arrived two days later than planned on December 2, 1956, because the Grandma was slowed down due to the fact that the maximum of the ship's capacity was exceeded by 57 people and the extra supplies like ammunition and weapons weighed the ship down. Fidel and Raul Castro planned to coordinate an attack with the Lano section of the 26th of July movement after the yacht landed in the Playa Los Colorados and Nicaro. The 82 revolutionaries headed to the Sierra Maestra Mountains in the southern Cuba in the Oriente province, which is now called the Guantanamo province. The revolutionaries tried to meet up with the Lano part of the movement, who were disarrayed because of the two-day delay. But East has been killed many of the 26th of July movement fighters. It is speculated that only about 20 of the original 82 men made it to the mountains, although the exact number is uncertain. In the next 10 days the dismembered group found each other in the mountains again. The survivors included Fidel and Raul, Castro, Che, Guevara, and Camilo Cienfuegos while in the mountains. The three men also had the help of the poor, and Abel Santa Maria's sister, Heide Santa Maria as well as Celia, Sanchez. 
Even though the beginning of the Castro brothers' takeover of Cuba started with two embarrassing failures, they were still able to gain power with other influential revolutionaries. This would help Castro gain the Cuban people's support that lived in the mountains to help them make the Sierra Maestra Mountains their base of operations until the takeover of the Cuban government, and this eventually helped the revolutionaries take over the whole Oriente province. In the mountains, Fidel Castro got additional aid from Frank, Pays, Ramos Latour, Huber Matos, and some others who helped Castro lead successful attacks on small groups of Batista's troops, while Raul Castro and Che Guevara gathered political support for Fidel Castro in the mountains, through killing Batista loyalist, anyone, who did not support Fidel Castro, and even people who, could rival him, politically. The movement also got help from Escapeteros, who are scarcely, armed individuals, who took upon themselves, to intimidate Batista's army, and acted out in the foothills of the Sierra Maestra, mountains, Escapeteros also helped to pass on valuable information, and, they also protected supply lines for Castro's revolutionaries. With the threat of anyone to oppose Castro's revolution gone, and a steady flow of information on Batista's military, allowed Castro's ideals to spread throughout the Oriente province, giving the support that Castro needed. Along with propaganda, which helped Fidel Castro to further spread his ideas and to further push the revolution along, Carlos. Franqua, helped by setting up an illegal radio station that could be heard in many Cuban cities that Castro had not yet infiltrated. The radio station was set up on February of 1953 and was named Radio Rebelled or Rebel Radio in English. The radio station reached an audience that could help Castro convert cities that were hard to take over to due to the strong military presence that Batista had stationed in them. While Castro was waging his revolution, his movement was still reduced to about 200 to 300 men. The revolutionaries were fighting against Batista's 37,000 trained men. Also America had put an embargo on Cuba in March 1958 without the military supplies necessary to replace or fix broken weaponry. Batista's Men were losing the upper hand that they once had. On Castro's rebels, this forced Batista's men to retreat time after time again. Since Batista's military was failing to put a stop to Castro, he decided to launch an attack directly on the Sierra Maestra Mountains. This attack was called Operation Verano, but to the revolutionaries it was known as La Offensiva. Castro's men defeated a 500-man battalion during the Battle of La Plata on July 21, 1958. It was reported that 240 of Batista's men were captured, while only three of Castro's men were killed. Castro almost lost on July 29, 1958 at the Battle of Los Mercedes. Castro sent about 300 men, who were easily dominated by Batista's army. When this happened Castro asked Batista for a temporary ceasefire on August 1st to pointlessly negotiate an agreement that would never happen. It later became clear that the negotiations was a ploy for Castro to buy time so that he and his men could escape to the mountains. This signified that Batista's big attack was a complete failure and that the end of Batista's power was closer than he might have wanted. A series of other successful battles led by Che Guevara, Camilo Cienfuegos, Jaime Vega, and others added more and more cities to the list of cities that were under control of Fidel Castro. The combination of these events and the Battle of Santa Clara caused Batista to flee. After the takeover of Santa Clara there was no resistance for the movement. When they went to take other cities, this eventually led to Fidel Castro gaining power of all of Cuba. For some Cubans the Castro takeover of Cuba was 
a positive outlook for Cuba's future, however for many Cubans, including Juan and Lloyd Obasalo, Fidel Castro's takeover meant that, they would never be able to see their country again, let alone their childhood homes, the brutality of the rebels, affected everyone, the attacks were not only on government troops, but innocent people also got caught in the crossfire at First the violence was in the Oriente province, starting with events like ambushing hospitals and opening machine gun fire on the sick or injured while they slept, as well as forcing farmers to give them a place to stay in, to cook for them. With guerrilla tactics like these it was clear that people rights were being violated. There were also many bombs set up in Havana by people who wanted to assist in Castro's revolution. Lloyd Basalo and Juan Basalo lived in Havana, Cuba, for most of their life in Cuba together. Juan was employed by Batista's Navy and then by the Army. Juan retired from the Army in 1955 and went to work for Shell Oil Company as a security guard. Lloyd Basalo stayed at home with her daughter Anna. Life in Havana was good, but then came the attacks on Havana. The revolutionaries used bombs to cause panic in the streets, and to cut off electricity for hours at night and during the day. According to Lloyd Obasalo, I had an uncle that was patrolling the beautiful streets of Havana with the pretty dresses and jewelry, looking for anyone that could be robbing the stores. He was just walking when a bomb went off in the gas pipe under the street. The bomb threw him across the street. I went to see him in the police hospital and he was all black and blue and swollen all over. It was so bad they had to cut off his wedding ring and he lost an eye. He also has to walk with a cane until the day he died. He was also released of his job because of his injuries. Also when the people did have power the televisions were flooded with rebel propaganda, long-winded speeches by Castro that lasted eight or nine hours a day, and airings of brutal mass murdering of Batista soldiers. None of the killings or speeches were announced ahead of time. You had to be careful when the televisions showed the military people being executed because we had Anna, and so that she would not see the people being killed, and one day she saw it briefly and asked me why Castro did that, it just broke my heart for her to see such a thing. Obviously, the rebels' actions led to fear among everyone, people feared the revolution, for what would come next, and for what it meant for them. Lloyd and Juan had no control over the disasters that were happening around them, and hoped that it would get better. It was 1959 and tensions were still rising even though, Castro was the new dictator of Cuba, he led a series of assaults against former soldiers that served for Batista. Later that year the revolutionaries came for Juan Basalo. Since Juan finished his obligations to Batista in 1955 they did not murder or tortured him, but rather put him out of his job. The rebels came to the Basalo's house one day out of the blue with their machine guns slung around their shoulders. They had the long beards and the green uniforms. The Castro military men asked Mrs. Basalo for Juan's old military uniforms and his work uniforms that he had for being a security officer at the Shell Oil Refinery Company. They had also asked for Juan's gun and gun license. You had to give them what they wanted and not talk back or else they would shoot you right there. Juan could not go back to work because he didn't have his uniform and gun to do his job. This forced Lloyd and Juan Basalo to move out of their beloved Havana home and in with Juan's mother, who lived away from the city and on the beach instead. The situation for past Batista militarians got worse and worse. Also people who supported Castro harassed people who did not and demanded that they would let them in their house, which forced Juan Basalo to leave Cuba in 1960 by plane, two months before Loida and Anna got to leave Cuba by boat. They were able to stay with Juan Basalo's relatives in Mexico, however they still had to be careful because Juan's 
relatives were supporters of Castro, they saved up enough money, so that they could be sponsored by a church, which, helped them move to America, where they enjoy their rights, and freedom to this day, they no longer have to, endure the extreme stress, that they felt while they lived, in Cuba during the revolution. Cuba, a place where a revolution happened that affected more people than was anticipated, a once promising president, Batista, became the instrument of not only his but many others' demise. It is often said that revolutions are not very revolutionary. This can be applied to the Cuban Revolution, because many Cubans lost their lives and rights only to have an oppressive form of dictatorship be replaced with an oppressive communist dictatorship, it is hard to say when the revolution ended, to many people it has ended as soon as Castro, took over, and to others like Fidel Castro himself, the revolution is a continuing part of history that will not, end, however for Juan and Moita Basalo the revolution has, ended, even though Cuba is no longer the Cuba they, once knew, they are still proud to be called Cuban American,